Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for November 2022. CoreLogic's National Home Value Index moved through its sixth month of decline last month, with values down a further 1.2%, taking the cumulative drop from the market peak to 6%. The geographical scope of Australia's housing downturn broadened through October, with every capital city and rest of state region, apart from regional South Australia, recording a drop in housing values. Across the capital cities, the month-on-month -month decline ranged from a 2% fall in Brisbane to Perth, where values nudged only 0.2% lower. Across the broad rest of state regions, monthly falls of more than 1% were recorded across New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland. Although more regions are recording a fall in housing values, the rate of decline remains diverse. The pace of falls has eased over the past two months across Sydney and the past three months in Melbourne, but has gathered momentum in Brisbane, where home values are now falling at the most rapid pace of any capital city or rest of state region. The changing dynamic across the largest cities has seen the rate of decline across the combined capitals index ease from a 1.6% drop in August to 1.4% in September and 1.2% in October. Despite the easing in the pace of decline, it's still probably too early to claim the worst of the decline phase is over. Australian borrowers are facing the double whammy of further interest rate hikes along with persistently high and rising inflation. There is a genuine risk we could see the rate of decline re-accelerate as interest rates rise further and household balance sheets become more thinly stretched. To date, the housing downturn has remained orderly, at least in the context of the significant upswing in values. This is supported by a below average flow of new listings that's keeping overall inventory levels contained. There's also tight labour market conditions, an accrual of borrower savings and a larger than normal cohort of fixed interest rate borrowers who have been so far insulated from the rapid rise in interest rates. Housing values across most of the broad regions remain well above pre-COVID levels, implying many homeowners remain in a positive valuation position relative to their purchase price. Focusing on the spring trend in advertised listings, the flow of new listings started to trend higher in October, but the traditional spring selling season remains well below levels at the same time last year and relative to the previous five-year average. Over the four weeks ending October 30th, the number of newly listed capital city dwellings was tracking 25.2% below a year ago and almost 19% below the previous five-year average. If anything, the low number of freshly advertised properties is probably helping to contain price falls to some extent. So far, we haven't seen any evidence of panic selling or forced sales. On the demand side, the estimated number of home sales has held reasonably firm through the first two months of spring. Based on model sales over the three months ending October, capital city home sales were approximately 17% lower than a year ago and 4% above the previous five-year average for this time of the year. The number of home sales during spring is well down from the highs recorded last year. However, the fact that sales activity is still above the five-year average over the past three months suggests demand for housing remains. With a 2% fall in dwelling values through October, Brisbane recorded the largest monthly declines of any capital city or broad rest of state region. Since values peaked in June, the market's down 6.2%, or in dollar terms, down about $48,300. The decline comes after a dramatic run-up, where values increased by almost 43% during the growth phase. Brisbane's unit market is recording a substantially milder decline, with values down 1.2% since peaking, compared with a 7.2% drop in house values. While values are falling, rents are surging. House rents are up 13.6% over the past year, and unit rents are up 13.1%. Overall, with interest rates likely to rise further, we are expecting housing values will likely continue to trend lower. The bad news for homeowners is that most economists have recently revised their cash rate forecasts upwards due to higher than expected inflation outcomes. Mainstream forecasts for the terminal cash rate range from 3.1% to 3.85%, while financial markets are pricing in a peak cash rate closer to 4%. 
At the lower end of these forecasts, a 3.1% cash rate implies an average variable owner-occupier mortgage rate of around 5.41% for new borrowers and 5.86% for existing borrowers, adding approximately $1,290 to $1,500 a month to mortgage repayments relative to the pre-rate hike mortgage costs on a $750,000 principal and interest loan on a 30-year term. Since the rate hiking cycle commenced in May, the cash rate is up 275 basis points. Considering mortgage serviceability tests assess a borrower's ability to repay a mortgage at 300 basis points higher than the origination rate, it will not be long before these serviceability limits are tested. Although housing risks remain skewed to the downside, there are a few tailwinds that should help to keep this downturn orderly and stave off a material rise in distressed listings. Tight labor markets are a key factor in keeping borrowers on track with their mortgage repayments. The RBA has previously hypothesized that a substantial lift in mortgage defaults would be dependent on a double trigger, defined as a combination of negative equity and inability to pay the loan. With housing values down only 6% nationally to the end of October and labor markets remaining extremely tight, we are yet to see either of these circumstances appear. Although the recent federal budget highlights labor markets are likely to loosen over the coming year, the unemployment rate is forecast to remain a full percentage point below the pre-COVID decade average of 5.5%. Strong labor market conditions and higher incomes should help to contain any material rise in distress listings or forced sales. Net overseas migration has bounced back quicker than expected, initially adding to rental demand, but also supporting housing demand more broadly over the medium term. Persistently tight rental markets and rising yields should help to incentivize investors returning to the market. Once interest rates and housing prices stabilize, it's likely investors will become more active, positioning for medium to long-term capital gains and taking advantage of strong rental conditions. Higher rents could act as a natural incentive for renters to consider buying. Household savings and a history of higher than required mortgage repayments should also provide a buffer to higher mortgage rates and cost of living pressures. The RBA recently noted the median variable mortgage rate borrower had enough in their offset or redraw accounts to cover 20 months of mortgage repayments as at August. The silver lining to falling home values is a more affordable entry point to the market for buyers. In the most expensive capital, Sydney, the median home value has fallen by approximately $160,000 since moving through a peak. House values in Melbourne are roughly $76,000 lower and $64,000 lower in Brisbane. Although borrowing capacity has also reduced sharply, the lower entry point to the market is likely to be a welcome outcome for those looking to buy. With advertised stock levels normalizing in some regions, along with fewer home sales, prospective buyers have more stock to choose from, less competition from other buyers, and an improved negotiation position, and more time to make the purchasing decision. For vendors, homes are taking longer to sell, auction clearance rates are generally below average, and vendor discounting rates have become more substantial. Vendors will need to be realistic about their price expectations and be ready to negotiate. A high quality marketing campaign will be an important factor to reach the right audience and help the property to stand out from other listings. Although we're approaching the end of the year, there is still plenty going on in the housing market. You can stay up to date with all the trends at the research pages of corelogic.com.au.